Welcome to Talkin' Baloney. Calvin Coco Pop. This is Booty. Oh, gosh. <laughs> What's going on? No script allowed. Are you some kind of bot? Come on, people. <laughs> oh, yeah. You want a pickle, you gotta give him a pickle, right? <laughs> I want to be a movie star. Wow, that sounds so interesting. Fresh and quick. Pudgy, pudgy pizza. Part of the Baloney Nation. Jim DZ. You guys still there? Oh, <laughs> wow. What an intro, man. It's just goosebumps. Yes. Yeah. You're excited <laughs> every week when you hear the intro. Every week. It's like, you, bam, up. You, you think Cheers is coming on or something. <laughs> it's just that good. <laughs> it's just that good of a show. <laughs> and the show, of course, is Talking Baloney. I'm the yes. big guy. That is Jim Teasy. Uh, correct. <laughs> Sitting uh, uh, right in front of the YouTube display for Talking Baloney. Bam. Oh, let's go the other way because I got another logo behind us. What? <laughs> there it is. Can you fit any more Talking Baloney stuff in the screen? Yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. <laughs> yeah, we have a shop. We make all kinds of stuff. And it's all legal. <laughs> I think for the so. Most, for the most part, I think so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We haven't been notified yet that it wasn't. Nope. Which is, you know, that's how the law works. Hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we we don't talk about politics or religion on this show, folks. You know, nothing is off limits. We will talk except, about anything except, except politics. politics and religion. And, and religion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we've got a lot of feedback from our sitcom madness Ooh. show. Uh, did we, we did ever? A, we did a two-parter, and then last week we did the final four, and we crowned mm -hmm. a winner. And uh, we'll get to that later and during the Baloney Nation segment, but there are a lot of interesting comments. Most of them directed to you. Yeah, uh, we'll touch on that later. Uh, we'll just uh, try to spend... Uh, as much time as we can not talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently there's Which some hateful us... people out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hateful people? Never. Yeah. Who would have thunk? Everybody behind their all keyboard tough warriors. <laughs> uh, uh, yep. So Anywho. this week, <laughs> we're, we're doing a, uh, a big episode this week because we're going to talk about Sigourney Weaver. Yeah, surprisingly, a huge action star of the female sort, and was not uh, did not realize how many movies she actually has done. Kind of iconic, actually. Yeah, um, she is uh, kind of unusual for a female in that she has led a big action franchise, the Alien franchise, mm -hmm. and she also has done some dramatic turns. She's been nominated for an Academy Award. Mm -hmm. uh, and very active career, tons and tons of movies. Yeah. But it really all started with Alien. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And if you have not seen Aliens or Alien or any of the movies of the franchise, you frankly aren't from this planet, and it really doesn't affect you. <laughs> <laughs> so the first movie was Alien. Yes. It is uh, Ridley Scott directed. Mm -hmm. Sigourney Weaver, of course, is Ellen Ripley. Mm -hmm. Their ship crash lands on a planet, and they discover the alien, and they mm -hmm. fight it off. Iconic action movie. Oh, big guns. Lots of big guns. Futuristic driving mobiles. Uh, futuristic ships. If you're a Star Wars fan, if you're, uh, you know... Uh, Star Trek fan. It's got the spaceships in it. It's got that. It's got that touches on the palette that you know you well, might like. And it and it took a different approach. Yeah. Whereas uh, it takes place in the far future, but unlike Star Trek, where everything is, you know, smelling of roses as they mm -hmm. travel in their beautiful ship, this is yeah. more of a gritty, grimy, kind of like what people actually are like. You know. Yeah. They they <laughs> squabble. They fight. They sweat, yeah. they bleed, they swear. Yep. Kind of like real life stuff. You walk yeah. outside right now. 
we all got an alien inside of us. That's what I'm a believer in that now. It's coming. <laughs> well, and that brings us, I mean, so you talk about famous scenes in Alien. Mm-hmm. That is a scene that has been parodied a bunch. Oh. You know, Spaceballs. Space famously <laughs> parodied where their alien popped out and started yeah. doing a song and dance with a top hat. <laughs> yeah. What'd he have? <laughs> the soup? Check, please. <laughs> uh, great Mel scene. Brooks. Oh, yeah. Awesome scene. <laughs> uh, but so after... I, it's it's those those scenes, they're they were freaky for their time. Yeah, Alien is it's an action movie, it's a science fiction movie, but it's also kind of a horror movie. Yeah. I mean that the creature kills in a profound way. Like it's you're 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 not gonna you're not gonna miss it. <laughs> yeah. It's uh in a lot of ways the alien is like a Jason or a Freddy. Mm-hmm. It's this unstoppable creature. We talk about yeah. Bill Cosby again. What is going on? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> well, uh, how do we that keep was another epi- up there? I don't know. That was another episode. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, oh, I, I, I see something in my mic. So I saw about crazy monsters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anywho. <laughs> <laughs> so, as anyone who's in the, uh, the biz. You, you do a big action movie, science fiction. You're going to follow that up with, of course, a period historical mm-hmm. drama, uh, The Year of Living Dangerously. Mm-hmm. Uh, a Mel Gibson movie. It's kind of an Australian production, but Mel Gibson and Sigourney Weaver about uh, trouble in Indonesia, critically acclaimed, and one of the best titles, The Year of Living Dangerously. Mm-hmm. Kind of has that James Bond kind of feel to the title. It does. Yes. <laughs> and then after that, uh, this is a movie we didn't talk about when we did our Chevy Chase episode. Mm-hmm. And we actually received a comment on YouTube asking why we didn't discuss this movie. But it's uh, 1983's Deal of the Century. Chevy Chase, I- Sigourney Weaver, Gregory Hines. Still have not watched it yet. And, uh, you know, the funny thing was, is this was actually on one of the movie stations. Didn't watch it. Have not watch watched it. it yet. Now, I got it. I watched a. You know, here's what happened. I watched a Chevy Chase movie on Netflix and it was trash. And I was like, yeah, I'm not going to watch another Chevy Chase movie until Christmas vacations back on. <laughs> uh, which one did you watch? Uh, where he's trying to go into like a retirement home. Oh, you watched the Netflix original with Chevy Chase and Richard Dreyfus, made uh, like two years ago. Rough stuff. Yeah, that's a bad place to go. Yeah, I. So Rough Deal of the stuff. Century. <laughs> <laughs> Deal of the Century is one of those movies that was on a lot when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. It seemed like I saw it a lot back then, and I haven't seen it in twenty years. Mm-hmm. I don't have uh, fond memories of it, and Rotten Tomatoes has it at eleven percent. Oh, <laughs> so not the best movie. No, no, <laughs> no. Well, no I, I, go ahead, go ahead. Nineteen eighty four. I know you're a huge fan. Ghostbusters. <laughs> Ghostbusters. Uh, and you know she's not a main role in the movie. She's more of a I would say supporting actress in the movie, but I'd say she, she's the female lead. Okay. Okay. But it's a great, it's a good movie. I love it. It's ghostbusters before it got too comical. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. <laughs> it was a comedy. <laughs> no, but it got way out there for this last ghostbusters that came out. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Well, we weren't, we weren't going to talk about that one. Okay. All right. Good. No politics. <laughs> no politics. <laughs> uh, so Sigourney Weaver is the love interest for Bill Murray. Mm-hmm. She is also the gatekeeper. Is that the one she is? With uh, she, Rick Moranis? She's the gatekeeper, yes. <laughs> and, and who is he? He is... Wait a minute. She's the gatekeeper, and I'm... <sighs> I can't remember what his character's called. 
hours. Yeah. <laughs> this is why we don't do research for these great yeah. moments where we oh. Oh. don't have any idea what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> He's like the, the I, it's not like the guard. It's, it's actually comical what he is. Yes. <laughs> I can't remember though. <laughs> yeah. Great movie though. Oh, phenomenal. Awesome movie. Stay Puff Marshmallow Man makes an appearance. I mean, <laughs> by the way, I see the little Stay Puff Marshmallow Men are making an appearance in the new one coming out. So the new Ghostbusters movie called Ghostbusters Afterlife had their first mm -hmm. little uh, teaser with Paul Rudd. Awesome. And, uh, yeah. And Sigourney Weaver is going to be reprising her role in the new movie. So nice. that'll be interesting. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Looking forward. And no, listen, folks, no shot against the last Ghostbusters for the actresses that were in the movie. Just the movie was very, I don't know, in my eyes, it strayed so far from the original that. Yeah, uh, it was, you know, hey, you can only work with what script you have. <laughs> I agree. It To me, mm -hmm. it's the equivalent of the. You know, the famous movie we always bring up, National Lampoon's Vacation, the remake Vacation. Yeah. It's on the same par as Ghostbusters, just like way over the top. The comedy mm -hmm. is right in your face, hits you in the face with the jokes. They're not subtle. There's mm -hmm. no uh, there's no uh, intelligence behind it. It's just... Every single line in the movie is a one-liner. <laughs> Every line. Yeah. And the, and it's no longer real characters. Like you watch the original Ghostbusters, Bill Murray is a character. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not like playing a funny guy. He is just a, a great character. Mm -hmm. Egon is his own character. Dan Aykroyd is his own character. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're not playing the Saturday Night Live version of Ghostbusters. They are the Ghostbusters. That's the vibe that I was talking about. That's what it felt like. It felt like I was watching a long skit on SNL. Yeah. You know? So like I said, we're not going to talk about that. Yeah, Buster. we're not great. We won't talk about it. <laughs> not important right now. <laughs> so she, uh, Sigourney Weaver, returns to Alien and mm -hmm. the sequel known as Aliens, directed mm -hmm. by James Cameron. Explosions galore. Yeah. <laughs> So this uh, this one ups the ante. It's no longer one alien they're dealing with. It's a bunch of aliens. But also, Sigourney is now teamed with a group of uh, space marines, as it were. <laughs> hey, and look, look at what we, we have that now, don't we? Space Force? Yeah. I think there's still a Space Force. Yeah. How about that, it's like the like the future was being prophesized. <laughs> and if there was ever a future presented in a movie that we are certainly hoping to move towards, it's the Alien franchise. Oh yeah, heck yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And didn't we uh, didn't we follow this up with uh, uh, pretty much? Well, I know in Aliens too, pretty much everybody's everybody's getting killed. And is there a little kid in the Aliens too? Yeah, so uh, they go to a planet and a rescue mission and discover a, uh, a girl that's, you know, everyone else is dead there except her. So mm -hmm. Sigourney Weaver, Ellen Ripley, kind of adopts her, takes care of her. Mm -hmm. And it's like fighting to pr protect her at the end is where the famous quote from Aliens comes from. Get your hands off her, you... <coughs> Sounds, it rhymes with witch. Oh. Get Rawr. off of your I ah, got it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good times. Good times. Yeah. You can and still again, swear, right? <laughs> we can? Yeah, I think we can, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't see why not. See, <laughs> that, ear, that's a particular... That's a, yeah. That's a word that's tricky, because that's not just a swear word. It's, it's a possibly... Uh, Misogynistic word. Yeah. Could be offensive. Yeah. Offensive yeah. in a way I didn't mean. I'm just quoting the movie. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Take it up with uh, Sony Pictures or whoever the hell wrote it or <laughs> produced or whatever. James Cameron. Go after him. Yeah. Go after him. He's got a yacht. <laughs> <laughs>
it's so called again, the Titanic. <laughs> Is Anthony Ooh. called the Titanic? I don't know, but he probably does. I, I would believe I, he does. I mean, I would. If I was James Cameron, I would have a yacht called the Titanic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so again, she follows up an Aliens movie with a critically acclaimed movie. Oscar nominated Gorillas in the Mist. Love this movie. There's a this is a deep story. This is a deep movie. Probably one of the deeper movies. Yeah, and, uh, and it's uh based on a real person. Based on real Diane real character, yeah. yeah. Yep. Great movie. Great movie. And I think she gets she gets killed in the end, right? Based on the real person. It's been a long time since I saw it. I'm pretty sure. I'm sure someone out there watching this will will correct us next week. But uh, I'm almost well, sure. We look it. forward to hearing from Aunt Paula. Yeah, Aunt Paula, fact check that for us. <laughs> so after that, she does uh, Working Girl, another great movie. Uh, yeah. Melanie Big Griffith hit. is in it. Um, she Justin is Ford. definitely. Sigourney Weaver's character in this is she is definitely a tyrant of a boss. Yes. Uh, Harrison Ford is in this. Yep. Um, a very young Harrison Ford. <laughs> oh, he wasn't that young. Yeah, he definitely looks. Well, he's pretty jacked in the movies. <laughs> 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 but yeah, uh, that it's a it's a good movie. It's a just you know movie about a uh, girl up and coming and works her way through the corporate ladder and puts in the extra work and Sigourney Weaver wants to take all the credit for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's a very eighties movie. Oh yeah. Uh, there were the a lot hair. of movies in the eighties. Well, also built around like business and success. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of like the Michael J. Fox secret of my success movie. Awesome. Movie. Just, yeah. A lot of movies in that kind of genre. And uh, so with Gorillas in the Mist and Working Girl, uh, Sigourney Weaver was double nominated uh, Best Actress and Best Supporting Actress in the same mm. year, 1988. Jeez, that's, yeah. that's, a, that's a killer resume already. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, you got to follow that up with Ghostbusters 2. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, Ghostbusters 2 is when the baby is getting stolen right the, with the with the uh the picture the painting right yes <laughs> vigo vigo uh so yeah she has a baby and her apartment is being haunted and vigo uh -huh. this is a good this is a really good sequel for ghostbusters too and uh i got to say bill murray again knocks out of the park his, his humor but his character i love the line where she comes to stay with him and uh she says you're not going to try all those old old lines on me are you and he says no 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 i have all brand new lines <laughs> <laughs> classic yes awesome movie a little bit so more it, special effects in this one too and it took them five years before they made the sequel because they were trying to find just the right script and I don't know that Ghostbusters 2 is as good as Ghostbusters, the original. But no, the I still think once a week. Oh, soundtrack. Dude, Bobby Brown. Come on. We've talked about this. Awesome. Yeah. Crazy soundtrack. They actually, I mean, listen, they bring the Statue of Liberty to life. <laughs> Come on I was just now. Gonna say, it, it was almost <laughs> like they did the first one with the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man, and they were like, how do we top I'll, that? Yeah. <laughs> Fill up the Statue of Liberty with, with a bunch of ghost jelly and play some Jackie Wilson and let it rock. You know what they should bring? They should have brought back. They should have done a giant Mr. Peanut. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm here, folks. If you need me to write your script, I'm available. All right. Let's take a break. Yeah, let's take a break. What the hell? Let's, let's pay uh, some bills. <laughs> We'll be right back. More hey. Sigourney Weaver. Up next, like a bad secret.
you could almost see the drummer in the background doing his thing. <laughs> Hammering those uh, drums. It's definitely not somebody doing the magic hands. <laughs> <laughs> Jazz hands? Jazz hands. What a huge hit that was on Instagram. <laughs> I was getting text messages from people with my with my photo of me going, <laughs> <laughs> like, what the hell? <laughs> it was great. Good times. <laughs> uh, so Alien 3 is where we left off. Yep. Um, so this is a kind of a famous movie in, in Hollywood terms, directed by David Fincher. It's mm-hmm. his first uh, big movie, and it was one of those – classic Hollywood tales of a young director losing control of a project and having it taken away by the studio. And everyone kind of thinks that the movie isn't as good as it should have been. Mm-hmm. I kind of liked it. It's, I thought uh, it was all right. I thought it was good. Takes place in a, uh, basically a prison colony on a faraway planet where she gets uh, marooned. And of course it's a uh, alien as well. Marooned. So mm-hmm. it's a bunch of prisoners and Sigourney Weaver against the alien. Great story. What could, what could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a tale as old as time. Oh, hey, there you go. Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> <laughs> Part uh, 10. <laughs> so a movie that we did mention once before, because we did a story about uh, fictional presidents. Uh, the movie is Dave. Uh, Kevin mm-hmm. Klein and Sigourney Weaver. Actually, he's a he's a he's a he's a great actor. I, if I remember right, he's in a fish called Wanda, right? That's right, Kevin Klein. Um, great actor. Your basic uh, story where a uh, guy looks like somebody, so they have him uh, take his place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the uh, president's he, in like a coma or something, right? Yeah, and uh, yeah. Sigourney Weaver is the first lady, and mm-hmm. she immediately recognizes that. This guy is way too nice to be her husband. <laughs> well, that's got to suck. <laughs> but, I don't know, do you remember there was a movie uh, Richard Dreyfus played a character who was an actor who did this impersonation of this dictator in some uh, Latin American country and they end up hiring him to be the uh, to take the place? <laughs> It's called Moon no. Over Parador, I believe. Oh, hey, might be uh, have to be have to watch that one. So there's like a whole subgenre of uh, people replacing people in power with actors. Mm. I would... oh, maybe we'll <laughs> do an episode on that. <laughs> I think we just lived it the last few years. <laughs> hey, just uh, <laughs> just an observation. <laughs> We're not going to really get into that. Yeah, we no elaboration needed. <laughs> no, no. It's just a throwaway comment with no yep, further just, you know, Yep. <laughs> hey, vote for Donley. <laughs> Anti-Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll jump ahead to 1997 and the ice storm. The ice this is storm. a Ang Lee directed movie. I don't remember this movie. Uh, Elijah Wood was in it, I believe. Oh, Spider Man. No, uh, no, Lord Toby McGuire. Oh, that's right. Uh, they look the same. They're both <laughs> in this movie. Are they really? Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap! I didn't uh, guess Katie that. Katie Holmes, Christine Ricci. It, mm-hmm. it it was a kind of an indie film, but it was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, takes place during a nice storm. Okay. Okay, hence the name. Okay. I feel like <laughs> it'd, be, uh, it'd be great if it was like the movie was called Ice Storm and it takes place in a cornfield. <laughs> <laughs> well, why they call it Ice Storm? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Yeah, nothing would surprise me out of Hollywood. So that's 1997. <laughs> she also in '97 does Alien Resurrection, her fourth and. So far, final Alien film. Mm -hmm. It's been over 20 years, so we might Mm -hmm. be in the clear, but who knows? Are we? (laughs) 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 
Alien Resurrection uh, brought Winona Ryder into the uh, the universe. Mm. Um, I w- I'm going to, I've seen this one recently. Mm. Very, to me, very sloppy directing. It was a uh, French director whose name I don't remember, but not that good. Yeah, I'm, this, they, they probably could have stopped everything at three. I mean, you get to a point where you're really stretching it. You know, you start yeah. getting into that Jaws 3 and 3D and <laughs> Jaws 4 in the Caribbean Islands and kind of, kind of, you know, <laughs> yeah. Nope, no need. You bring in all the stars you want for Aliens 4 and it's. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, I think it was low budget, so it's, mm-hmm. there weren't a lot of stars in it. I mean, uh, Ron Perlman was in it. He's really good. But... I like Ron Perlman. Yeah. 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 Uh, but this this is kind of a good trend for her. She goes from that to uh, Galaxy Quest, nineteen ninety nine. Galaxy Quest, isn't that with Tim Allen? Tim Allen, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Alan Holman Rickman. Oh, there we go. A uh, parody of Star Trek, and uh, we we have talked about this before during mm-hmm. our spoof episode. Mm-hmm. Kind of a similar plot to Three Amigos. Yeah, yeah, it's it's funny. Uh, yeah. It's got I'll a cult leave, following. Yes, it does. I I think it's more popular now than it was when it came out. Alan uh, Rickman, the actor, passed away um, mm-hmm. about a year ago, and so many people responded to his passing with clips from Galaxy Quest. Mm-hmm. Out of all the movies he's done, I mean, the first Die Hard. Uh, he was the sheriff of Nottingham and Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Yes, he was. He's done all these big projects, but Galaxy Quest was kind of like the one that people loved him the most for. Yeah, listen, to that <laughs> yeah, he's he was just a he was a great actor. He he fit every role, every role he did. <laughs> How about the movie uh, Heartbreakers? Uh, this is the movie where she's like the mom, and they have a a. She has a daughter, and they're both scamming people out of money, right? Yeah, the daughter is played by Jennifer Love Hewitt. Jennifer Love Hewitt, yes. I've seen this movie. It has, uh, oh, who is it? Is it uh, Gene Hackman? Kind of Gene Hackman. He plays the uh, billionaire that just keeps smoking through the whole movie and coughing. And I'm gonna, <laughs> say, I'm gonna say this is <laughs> uh, this movie's hard to watch. <laughs> It's not a great, great movie, maybe overall, but, uh, so the director is David Merkin, who is, Mm -hmm. uh, one of the early creative forces behind the Simpsons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, worked a lot with, uh, Chris Elliott and did, uh, the show Get a Life. I don't know if you remember that one. I like Chris Elliott. That dude's hilarious. (laughs) So I'm a fan of David Merkin, so I kind Mm -hmm. of have a soft spot for the movie but it's not mm-hmm. as good as it probably should have been well well it's got the uh it's got the i can't remember the actor's name that uh jennifer love hewitt's character starts to fall for um he's been in a bunch of movies jason lee J- yes he's My awesome name is earl yes yes that's it <laughs> i like that guy uh isn't he in like uh how i met your mother too right no that's uh, Jason Siegel. Ah, that's sorry. Never mind then. <laughs> Jason Lee did uh, like all the Kevin Smith movies in the early mm-hmm. days. And I'll gotcha. give you a, a wrestling tidbit because we love wrestling. Yes, we do. Uh, John Huber, who uh, passed away recently, mm-hmm. took the real name Brody Lee. Mm-hmm. That name came from Jason Lee's character in Mallrats, who was named Brody. Combined Brody and Lee, that's how he got his name. Nice. He kind of looked like Jason Lee at the time. Mm-hmm. Nice. I like that. A little little yeah. factoid for everybody. Just a little tidbit. You gotta Since find that talking... on the, you gotta find that on the Melter page. <laughs> Since we're talking Sigourney Weaver, we gotta explain <laughs> how John Huber got the name Brody Lee. Of course. Exactly. Besides, it's your show. <laughs> do, whatever, do whatever the hell we want. 
<laughs> in that case, let's talk about the village. Okay. This is the <laughs> <laughs> This is that supposed M Night Shyamalan horror movie, right? Oh, there's no supposed about it. Yeah, it, this movie's trash. <laughs> oh. I, I Really? <laughs> listen, the movie is going great. Great until you find out the twist. Yes. I, but that's, that's every M night movie. I know. But you know what? After watching movies like, you know, the movie with the wind with Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> right. Now to me, that's where the twist went bad. Yes. That's where now, the twist got way out. there. The village is a good movie. I did not like the twist. Let's just put it that way. I didn't like the twist. I didn't see it coming. <laughs> well, I've seen it's the village really a bunch of times. <laughs> I, I like it a lot. Yeah. Uh, I've got the score. So I really like the music. And I, I think I know what the problem is, is he created such a good movie in the beginning. You didn't want that movie to end. Exactly. Where they're, they're barricaded in the woods. And there are these like, basically like red riding hood story where these, these yep. giant wolves or some kind of creature outside their walls that they're all like hiding from. Right. And it turns <laughs> out it's all just a plot. Cause these are all people who had terrible tragedies in their life and they wanted to get away from society. Mm -hmm. And in order to remain isolated, they're raising their kids to believe that there is no other place to go, that they have to stay there. Yeah. You know, it's uh I mean, <laughs> you should watch it again. Give it another I'm, shot. I'm going to have to. And, but, you know, it kind of feels like the way we should be doing things today, actually. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people are. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> no, I, it, it, I like the movie. I just, I did not like the plot twist. It threw me. It throws you. You've got to be prepared. And you should be that way with any M. Night Shyamalan movie. You really should be. Oh, yeah. And I, and I think everyone, was expecting a twist and again it was just like the twist <laughs> people wanted more they wanted to believe it was a horror movie that was mm -hmm. there was really bad stuff going on that was me <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was me i wanted to see freddy krueger with jason Voorhees coming out of the woods slashing people <laughs> and it wasn't gonna happen you know you, when you watch an m night Shyamalan movie you really got to be thinking with your brain all of it because <laughs> there's details that are going to happen if you're not paying attention you have to go to the bathroom you miss something whole movie's ruined <laughs> <laughs> and so that's probably one of the bigger critiques of him mm -hmm. um he does put the clues there like if you, if you watch the movie all the clues mm -hmm. are there it says who would ever put them together to get that answer mm -hmm. <laughs> until you've seen it it happens in mark Wahlberg's movie you see the trees or the winds blowing. You're like, ah, why do you keep showing the damn trees? <laughs> and then you find out and then you're like, God, turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> the wind. What? Come on. <laughs> who writes this? Who wrote this shit? <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Roar, 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 roar. <laughs> uh, let's skip ahead a little in here. Uh, because at this point, she's in her later stages of her career. She's doing a lot of uh, cameos, guest spots. Yep. Um, she does have a prominent role in the movie Wally, -E, though. Yeah, she's the onboard computer. Yeah. Talk about Wally. -E. That that would Great. never happen, right? I, I had to read it to believe it. I never would have known she was in that movie, but. From what I understand, either the director or somebody was big fans of Aliens, and they wanted her to be the voice. They wanted her to have some kind of role in the movie. I didn't know that. Yes. And I read that about four, about an hour and a half ago, folks. So that's why <laughs> I know that. I actually did some research here. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I mean, Hey, maybe, maybe every week you could do research. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it takes it takes a lot to get three cups of coffee ready before the show. <laughs> I know. 
You got the YouTube screen all looking perfect. Oh, yeah. I don't want to push it. <laughs> yeah, folks, I actually do some research for this. This isn't just come out here and jab away and start talking. We actually got our facts straight for at least a couple minutes. <laughs> so we, we've we talked about uh, James Cameron. Yes. Uh, you do like James Cameron as a director because I do. He, he's one of the two names you always go to. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I was already writing the script for Aliens on the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> Can't make it up, man. This is easy stuff. <laughs> so, Avatar. <laughs> yeah. I. Well? Listen, I know everybody out there loves Avatar. Obviously, it made billions of dollars across the... I had a hard time with this movie. I really did. And the fact that they're making two, three, or four more of them... I don't know. I mean, I guess when it came out, it was different. You know? Yeah. It's it's a different type of movie. Hey, it gives you the ability... Hey, you know, there's some good feeling stuff in the movie. You know, handicapped. You can go into another body of something. You're free to run. You see the excitement. All that. But... Then it's typical, you know, hey, we're on this beautiful planet. Let's blow it up. <laughs> Why? Right. It's... Why should anybody else be happy? <laughs> Kill them all. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> well, I mean, the story of the movie is essentially the same as Dances with Wolves. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I could see that. It, it wasn't an original story. What, what made it so popular um <laughs> what just happened was the, the, the technical side of things <laughs> you need a better screensaver yeah see how i did that well wham <laughs> <laughs> almost threw it through the tv <laughs> so people were just so blown away by how the aliens looked in the alien world it was one of those <laughs> movies you had to see on the big screen because it was so impressive mm-hmm I don't know, like, doing all these sequels, you've already seen. I don't know if it's going to be so impressive now. If he doesn't have a story to back it up, I don't know how these sequels are going to do. Where, I, I mean, I get it. They're, they're coming out. So, we obviously, we don't know. Any, anything I say is speculation. And I have no sources that are credible. But no? <laughs> just, just, no. Other than Google. And we all know Google never lies. But other, all I say <laughs> is that, where could you possibly go? They already went from, you know, beautiful planet to end of the planet to like, my God, it was, it was disturbing at the, towards the end of the movie to watch. Like, it's like, here we go. Military might let's blow it all up, kill everybody, knock it all down. All the wonderful colors are gone. <laughs> right. Gotta have fi fire and doom. <laughs> I don't know where it goes. And, and the whole purpose of the avatar i mean is that is that really what the story is going to keep going with like humans inhabiting these fake aliens to interact with them i mean and it looks like the avatar characters are going to be the same again so are they going back to the other planet or another planet they are they population relocating everybody i i, I don't know I, I really don't i don't i don't i don't see where this movie needs a sequel <laughs> yeah uh, but Sigourney Weaver will be in the sequels. Hey, you know, and I'll, I'll still watch it when it comes out. I'm going to want to know where this is going. Yeah. Well, as we've just raised all these questions, there's a lot we don't know. And mm -hmm. it, maybe, maybe James Cameron will pull it off. You know, Hey, if he needs some of my advice, you know, hit us up at, at baloney talking on Twitter, talking baloney.com text us in a question, James Cameron. I'm here to help you. <laughs> Maybe you can call the hotline. 585-484-1770, folks. That's Especially you, James Cameron. Reach out. My people, I don't have any people. <laughs> Just reach out. We'll talk. <laughs> now, before we uh, wrap up Sigourney Weaver, uh, there's a couple of movies. Uh, she did a movie called Red Lights. <laughs> uh, you probably haven't seen it. No. I saw it because I picked up the Blu-ray for $1 at the Dollar Tree. Ah, how was it? It's a pretty good movie. I will now have to watch it tonight. 
So Robert De Niro is a uh, is a, a psychic, and uh, Sigourney Weaver plays the um, psychological uh, professor who's trying to prove that he's not really a psychic. Mm. It's a good premise. Pretty good. I movie. like it. Yeah, I like it. I'll have to watch it. And uh, didn't make any money, and I don't think anyone's ever heard of it. But if you happen to stumble across Red Lights on Blu-ray for a dollar, pick it up. At the dollar store, how can you go wrong? It's a Blu-ray for a dollar, <laughs> folks. A Blu-ray player for those of you that are too young to understand, a Blu-ray player came out after the DVD player, which came out after the VHS, which came out after Beta. What's VHS? <laughs> <laughs> That's trying to explain beta so, to somebody. <laughs> oh my god, they would. It's yeah, nowadays if they want to watch the kids want to watch something, they just go like YouTube, Google, Internet. They got their special pages they go to now, so their parents don't know what they're doing and all that other good stuff. So it's like you try to explain VHS, CDs, DVDs, hell, even Blu-ray. They're like Blu-ray. What's what's that? <laughs> it's crazy. You know what's going to be time. funny is when all this technology comes crashing down and we get out our old VHS recorders and our old CD and DVD players and everybody's like, oh, my God, that's amazing. Is that new technology? <laughs> We're going to be getting there sooner than you think. Yeah. But Sigourney Weaver. Mm -hmm. Tremendous career. Still making movies. Still active. She'll be in the new Ghostbusters. She'll be mm -hmm. in the new avatars. Um, new new aliens, maybe? Possibly. Uh -huh. We are going to take a break. When we come back, we got Baloney Nation. We've got a question to answer about the <laughs> sitcom Madness. Uh, and we're going to do a new feature where we just kind of talk about what we've been watching uh, this yes. past week. Excellent. <laughs> nice. Hey, hey, welcome back, Baloney Nation. That's right. The big it guy. is Baloney Nation time. Jim Deasy, the big guy, all our listeners and viewers who constantly hit us with yep. questions and comments on our hotline at 585-484-1770. Get your coffee ready, folks. <laughs> Get ready. So we crowned Seinfeld as the winner of our 64 sitcom Madness bracket. Mm -hmm. We did. It came down to Seinfeld versus The Office. Correct. Here is what Melly Mel said. <laughs> Seinfeld instead of The Office? What the heck? So, needless to say, folks, I have to live with Melly Mel's. So I've been getting the, <laughs> I have been getting this nonstop all week. And I, it was my justification is that we are basing this on shows with longevity that didn't change over the period of their run. So we all know that the office kind of tapered off after Steve Carell left and they were kind of going down a path that, you know, if you read all the critics will say the same thing. You know, the critics that are paid big money, big money, <laughs> will all say the same thing, that it kind of, you know, lost a little luster there at the end. And you can kind of see it when you binge watch it and you watch it. You can see that never yeah. happened with Cheers because their main, their stars stayed and they were there to the end, most you of them. Said Cheers. And, yeah, oh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, in, in, the, in the show Cheers, their stars stay. Things kind of stay. I mean, their stars come and go, but the show doesn't taper off. Correct. It continues on. It doesn't lose any momentum. Right. And I felt like The Office lost momentum at the end, and that's why I decided to go with Cheers. Seinfeld. Yeah, Seinfeld. I don't know why I keep saying that. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great defense oh, you're doing. <laughs> you know why? You know why? Because I've been I've been watching Cheers all for all week. <laughs> <laughs> Seinfeld, folks. Seinfeld. Yeah, so, and the other thing is we were trying to crown a winner not so much just based on what we liked. Mm -hmm. We were trying to do it, 
you know, for for the total effect on pop culture, the total, you know, what critics think, how the shows have done over the course of time. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't just like what's Jim D- G- Jim Deasy's favorite show of all time. That's yeah. a different discussion. Be- because if you were going to say what's my favorite show of all time, and we weren't ranking them against anybody, I would just say it was The Office. You know, even when it got bad, it was still The Office. It was my show. Right. But if you're going for longevity, and I get it, people talk about The Office now more than ever. But right. if you talk to people about The Office, they will tell you that it. It, the shit kind of hit the stuff kind of hit the fan after Rawr. Steve Carell left. It, it, it looked like it was kind of kind of lost. And uh, as we start this new segment called "What We're Watching," <laughs> I have been binging The Office. Yep, I've uh, been binging since I got Peacock. I'm almost through season four, and I'm already seeing what I think is a decline in quality. Mm-hmm. Uh, Steve Carell is still there, but it's just the writing isn't as good. Um, and I know it's going to get worse because <laughs> I really didn't enjoy The Office as much at the last season when Steve mm-hmm. Carell wasn't there. You know, and I love The Office right up until, you know, when Steve Carell left. Even Will Ferrell's my favorite character, you know, Mr. California, great character, yeah. but... The office lost some of that luster that made it the office right. when it started, when all that was going on. So, I've and been that's why the... that's why I went Seinfeld. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, just for clarity, Seinfeld. <laughs> and we, we should mention everyone who's been contacting you directly; they should be contacting the hotline directly, so we can share their comments and thoughts. Five eight five four eight four one seven seven zero. Don't come right. at the man. Don't come at the man. You go to the show. Come bring to it, the show, and then the man will respond on air. That's yeah. how it works. Yeah. Work yeah. with us, not against us. Bring <laughs> it to the show. You got something to say? You say it to my face. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in addition to uh, watching The Office, mm-hmm. I, uh, I've i been watching uh, a show on Amazon Prime called Invincible. It's a mm-hmm. new animated superhero show for adults. It's very violent. Uh, that's a good show. I like it already. I have to watch and, it. Uh, <laughs> I recently watched uh, Back to School. <laughs> yes, you and I both <laughs> shared that. We both watched it on the same day. That's kind of funny. Yeah. The Rodney Dangerfield, 1986, classic mm-hmm. movie. Robert Downey Jr. is in it, of all mm-hmm. people. Um. Burt Young, who was Paulie in the Rocky movies, plays yep. uh, Rodney's uh, limo driver. And isn't isn't the diver in the swim team the kid from Karate Kid? Who we know as Johnny Lawrence. Johnny Lawrence. As he was in almost every role he had in the 80s, he plays the a bad bully, guy. <laughs> bully <laughs> a slash bad guy. <laughs> bad guy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, always stealing someone else's girl. Hey, but he's good love, at it. He's great I love in the him. Role. In, love him in Cobra Kai. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you been watching this week? So I have been binge watching Cheers. Hence why I got Cheers on the brain right now. <laughs> and uh, I did not realize how well written this show is. It never misses a beat. And I'm up to episode six or seven now of the first season. And the show never misses a beat there's no lull everybody has a part everybody plays that part like there's no tomorrow and every part it's it's amazing because it's all like it's an orchestra it's like watching an orchestra on tv everything's (laughs) it's perfect (laughs) and you're watching that on peacock peacock yeah you know and uh, i have the premium so i don't have to watch all the stupid commercials oh you're not seeing the state farm ads every Commercial break? Two, every every two minutes, yeah. three minutes. Oh my god! I listen. I uh, the, the peak. I, I watched. By the way, I watched. Uh, started watching the Greatest American Hero again. Wow. Uh, yeah. Did not realize how poorly written that show was until I started watching it again. <laughs> Holy cow! Is it terrible? <laughs> yeah, that's a show that doesn't hold up. 
there are literally char- scenes on that show where you can see the character waiting for someone to tell him what to do or read a line. Yeah. <laughs> it's that bad. <laughs> and I remember as a kid watching it and thinking how great it was every time he went to fly and he like didn't know what he was doing and he would like crash into something. Yeah. And then you watch the show and it's like 20 episodes into the first season and he's still doing that. It's like, okay. Yeah. Get on with it. Learn to fly already. Come on. You're wasting time here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's pretty bad. From season one, episode one, it's whew. like, if you want to watch it, it, it's like watching a really bad SNL skit. By the way, I've been binge watching some of the old SNL stuff. And uh, when SNL was funny, <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what, you cannot beat some of the stuff those guys were doing way back when. Oh, my God. It's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, so what else you, else you want? Ah, you know, I've been watching a couple other. I went back. I watched some of the old Popeye cartoons okay. from way back from the original stuff way back when. And Where'd let you me just watch those. Uh, they're on Netflix. You can watch them on Netflix or no, maybe it is okay. Peacock. I'm not sure. It's on one of them. All right. But uh, I will have I will say this: there are some serious racial undertones in Popeye <laughs> for oh, a cartoon. Course. Sure, did did not realize it until I started watching it, and I was like, "Wow, I'm probably done watching this now." <laughs> well, I mean, you're talking about a cartoon from the 1940s. Um, Woo wee! You are the you watching the original black and white? Yes. Uh, the Fleischer Studio Popeyes are tremendous. Mm. It's really great animation. I love that character of Popeye who's always like muttering under his breath. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yes, it doesn't hold up to today's uh, standards no. of. And I guess you yeah. kind of got to put, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying you, you really got to put it in its time frame for what it was back then and right. leave it at that. If you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. <laughs> uh, so as you know, I have a Blu-ray collection. Yes. Uh, so I watched uh, the Cloverfield movies, uh, the whole trilogy. I watched it this week. Yeah. How do you How do you feel? <laughs> I feel pretty good about it. Yeah. You know, the first Cloverfield, a huge hit. You know, it's mm-hmm. the, the first person Blair Witch style mm-hmm. of a giant monster attacking New York City. Which one's the John uh, Good one? Is that the part two? The second one, 10 Cloverfield Lane, it's yes. John Goodman, and it's uh, people trapped in a bunker because uh, the world was what he thinks of as possibly a nuclear attack and everything's contaminated. Uh, it turns out it's like aliens invading. Mm-hmm. Uh, classic. And mm-hmm. then the third one, I know you watched at least some of it because mm-hmm. it, it had the great Super Bowl night debut. Mm-hmm. Where Netflix dropped a commercial in the Super Bowl and said, "Hey, a new movie debuting tonight, Cloverfield Paradox." So, this was the third one. I, I they should have stayed just with the first and second. <laughs> have you seen it since that night? Uh, it, this is the one where they kind of go to space, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. all. Uh, and now so it, start, it, it we kind of starts like the first one, though, you know, where he's like the the husband or whatever. He's at back at the house or the apartment and there's explosions going off all over. And, you know, yeah, uh, but I kind of the, the, the in space thing kind of. So uh, it debuted after the Super Bowl. and We happened to be at Mad Dogs in the VA. Yes, and we, we stayed up that night to watch it. I think you fell asleep. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I did. I, I was I was teetering, but this was the first time I'd seen it since that night. Mm-hmm. I think it holds up. It's pretty good. Yeah, I probably need to go back and watch it all the way through while I'm awake. <laughs> always helps. Yeah, it it <laughs> it does. <laughs> it it always helps when your eyes are open. <laughs> yeah. But basically, they're. Uh, they're doing a super collider in space to try to solve the world's energy problems, and it creates a merging of two dimensions. Mm-hmm. So there's a famous scene where, like, the guy's arm is like stuck in the wall, and 
his arm ends up coming off and then his arm is crawling around on its own. <laughs> yes. I yeah. love it when that stuff happens. You can't beat it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, di- I will say this. I did, you know, we didn't have a chance to talk about it, but real quickly, I did watch both WrestleManias, um, okay. as I'm sure you probably did. Cause we're all, you know, WrestleMania fans and are all wrestling fans. And, uh, Gotta say, night one better than night two, in my opinion. For those yeah. watching, you know, um, main event of r- night two, crazy, crazy. Main event of night one, history in the making. The raw motion in the ring, insane. Would love so, to have been there. <laughs> of course. <laughs> what was your but favorite match uh, overall, both nights? Man, I'm I'm a huge Cesaro fan. You know, I, I, the guy's amazing in the ring. You know, yeah. I would have Definitely. liked to have seen Kevin Owens jump off the pirate ship, but you know, man, everything was so <laughs> damn wet down there. I don't know how you could possibly do that safely. <laughs> yeah, they had some weather issues in uh, Tampa. Mm-hmm. Actually, had the first ever weather delay at a WrestleMania. Yeah, and I thought the letting the wrestlers go off script for a minute on the mics at the beginning was a great idea. Yeah. And then then you watch Monday Night Raw and you're like, "Oh, Jesus, here we go." <laughs> yeah. They, I think there was a bit of a letdown after that and uh I just I don't understand. You do the fans live on Saturday and Sunday and then on Monday Night Raw after WrestleMania, we go back to the Thunderdome with no fans. Yeah. It's I didn't a different get that. Thunderdome. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> They're now at the University of uh, Southern Florida. Um, I, I think having fans there is they're probably still a few weeks, if not months away from doing that on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. But I think the next big pay-per-view, you'll see fans again. Just give me Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley. That's all I want to see. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yes. And Lashley held on to his title. So who knows? Maybe that's SummerSlam main event. Ooh, that would be great. That would be great. Yeah. You know, I want to see it. Give me Edge versus Daniel Bryan. One on one? One on one. All right. Have Drew go challenge Roman Reigns. Boom. <laughs> I like it. I love look at I already wrote I already wrote the next pay per view. <laughs> they don't need any more than that. That's you just gave them three main events. Three main events right there. Boom. <laughs> All right. Any, anywho. <laughs> so a reminder to our baloney nation to give us a call, 585-484-1770. Hit us up with your comments. Let us know what you're watching, what we mm-hmm. should be watching. Uh, let us know your thoughts on WrestleMania. Uh, let us know your thoughts on Cheers. Mm-hmm. Anything else? <laughs> Listen, all I got to say is, man. I, I I took a bad rap for the cheers for the uh, for the Seinfeld over the office, man. I will say I heard from some people uh, who agreed with the choice of Seinfeld. So I don't want to say it's all negative. You know, there are some people who thought that was the right choice. I had people tell me that the office was uh, I should have been the office, and but then privately told me that I made the right decision. <laughs> Some people just want to talk. <laughs> hey, that's what the hotline's for again. <laughs> <laughs> Text it up. Oh, and uh, uh, let's see. Give a shout out to the Ant Man, man. Hope everything's going better with the fam. So, Ant Man, us here at Talking Baloney, man, we're thinking about you. That's right. And uh, yeah. we will have him on again at some point in the future as well. Yeah, next couple of weeks. And we're going to have – we got a hell of a show planned for that one. Uh, yeah. Ant-Man is great at, at coming up with ideas for his appearances, and he's got a pretty good idea this time. So. Yeah, we're not going to – we're not even going to tease it. Nope. We're going to leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> and the words folks, of Billy listen. Joel, <laughs> leave a tender moment alone. Yes, or just sing us a song. You're the piano man. <laughs> hey, listen, folks, if it's raining outside, put up an umbrella. You'll stay dry. <laughs> That's okay. Jim Easy's tip, tip of the day. 
<laughs> I'll make sure to tweet that out. Yep. And keep your tires inflated to 44 pounds if you have an SUV. <laughs> Other than that, watch your damn hands. Have a good day. <laughs> Take it easy, Jim Deasy. <laughs> <laughs> oh!